Good afternoon. I um, wanted to do another video on edge joining with a wood a wood body joiner rather than the number seven um, Stanley that I used in last night's video. And the reason being is I I, the, I, I did a little bit more research today, and I'm finding the the um, finding these Stanley joiners are not cheap. I mean, the, even the vintage ones are. Every one I put it this way: I I went went to eBay, uh, which is as good a source as any for finding at, le at least. They did I did a ballpark idea of what the cost, the current cost is. And these planes are running for anything that I found in decent shape, meaning, especially if you're new, um, meaning you could get it. Put a, you have to put a major amount of work into getting it to to um, work for you. They're running in the hundred and fifty to two hundred dollar range, and that depending on where you live, that the, the shipping, a lot of, a lot of the planes unfortunately are overseas, so you're going to be paying a, a fairly hefty shipping rate on a lot of them, anywhere from thirty to sixty five dollars. And there's taxes involved in all that, depending on where you live. So, as I said in last night's video, I, I my guess was from from what little I looked last night, my guess was these planes are going to run between 150 and 200 dollars, and that is pretty accurate. Um, probably more um, for a vintage one that is worth buying, meaning the the type 11s up through the type 17s. I guess they would be most most to me. They're they are the best. Um, Stanley planes that are out there. Anything newer than that, really, they're not all that great. They they suffer from a lot of issues, from what I gather. I've never really I I did use a newer smoothing plane, just messing around with it at number four. I mean, and it was um, pretty uh, not horrible, but it was not definitely not great in my, in my opinion especially if you're a new woodworker who is not really familiar with restore, restoring and setting up planes correctly. Um, I'll be the first person to tell you, I've been woodworking for quite a while, on and off for you know, 12 years or so, 13 years. And I still, there, there are certain planes that I know that if I run into them, I, I know enough to look at them and say, I, I, I'm not skilled enough to fix this. So what I'm going to be using here, I, I did. I think I pulled this plane out the other the other day. It's the brand is Howland and Company, New York. And what, what kind of cool? One of the things you don't really notice, even when you own the plane. See if I can get that in here. Sorry about my camera work here. You may, maybe it's it's kind of faded, but you can see the iron there, and it has this cool little beehive logo, which I think is pretty neat. So what I did right before I started, started I, I did sharpen this up, which is a habit I've been getting into lately. I used to, what I used to do was sharpen afterwards. At least I theoretically sharpened afterwards. I'm sure there were times I probably, um, I know there were times I probably didn't. And then... The next, and then next time, you know, that's time I want to use my tool, whatever it might have been. It might, it, it probably wasn't sharp as it should have been. Another interesting thing here is the the um, cap iron has a little raised slot. You can see that there, and it so, sort of sits in this groove. It sort of tracks in the groove. What you're going to find, here's the problem with most wood body planes that I've come across um, and why it might be a detriment for a new woodworker to use one. The part A is that usually you can find one of these pretty cheap. 
I, I looked, I, I didn't look for this particular brand. Uh, I just looked at wood body um, joiner planes. And I, I, I've seen them ranging from as low as $30 up to around 100 um, So right there, you are saving money going this route. But the, the, what you might have a problem with is I've never come across one of these planes that didn't need some throwing up, which is not that difficult. It's actually fairly easy. But if you're a new woodworker, that might be a, might you know, present a little bit of a problem if, if you don't know how to flatten a, a plane up yet because you could make it a lot worse if you don't know what you're doing. There's thankfully there's videos out there. Um, I, I once again I hate this to use names but in this case I will. Um, Paul Sellers for example has a couple of videos free on YouTube where he demonstrates restoring wood body um, planes. And it, it's he's, he does a pretty nice job of concisely explaining how to do it. And then, you know, then he actually does it. I mean, he manages to do it. And, and I'm sure there's some editing involved, but he, he manages to, to, to get these planes up and running quicker than I, you know, ramble on a lot of my videos. Uh, what I was, was going to say here is what I've noticed is not only are these planes my plane hammer here Oops, sorry as I said I'm not set up for filming what I've noticed is a lot of these planes when you come across them they're going to have a wider mouth which isn't necessarily the end of the world for a for a joiner plane, but you, you, you know, the tighter the mouth, the better in most cases. But what happens is, what, because these planes, and just, just for clarity's sake here, I'm using the same boards last night that I joined it with, but I'm using the side I didn't join it. So I'm not cheating in any way. So just for and I'll double check myself to make sure I'm, I'm do actually doing that. And there you go, there is the side I joined it last night, a nice clean gap, if you can see that. It's, so it's, uh, unfortunately, these two boards are not evenly, they're not even thickness, so it's, it's hard for me to say, oh, look at that nice gap, nice non-gap. This side, there's a, there's a pretty bad gap, as you can see there. See if I can close that up a little bit better, but there it is. I mean, you can see that's still pretty bad. So this is the side I will be joining right now. But yeah, the, the, going back to the plane, the, the issue being once the, the, there, there comes a point when the planes, as they were being used, they were being worn out and you know, un unlike a metal plane, they, a wood plane will wear out a lot faster. And they, they, they often have, they often have the, um, the same issue that metal planes do because of the wear, just the way planes are made. You have, from the pressure of the, the cap iron, the wedge, and the, uh, and the, and the plane iron itself, being being um, wedged in and, and, and hammered down, he did that little bump right behind the mouth of the plane, or, uh, the mouth of the sole. I mean, and um, it gets exaggerated in wood planes more so than it does in metal planes. And so the uh, the you know the, the the owners of these planes, the people who use them day in and day out, they would often flatten their planes. I don't know how often, but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a wild guess and say probably probably a few times a year, maybe more, depending. And what happens is the more you flatten it, the wider the mouth ends up getting. In this case, this mouth is not horrible, but it probably won't survive a few more flattenings, in my opinion. And what ends up happening there is, um, to restore it, you really need to almost rebuild the plane. Once again, that's cool if you're, if you're into that, and if you're a... Um, experienced woodworker but if you're if you're the new guy that is trying to get into woodworking 
and you don't want to spend thousands of dollars on premium planes and this is where you're going to run into some issues trying to go to vintage route so let's see what we have here I'm barely taking a shaving there once again barely taking a shaving one thing, the, the really good thing about this plane is the, the iron, the tool steel is incredible on this plane. The bad news is, is you can see this is taking very, very fine shavings. Fine, as fine as the, the Stanley I just sharpened up last night. Where I've always struggled with these is the the what I like about the the metal. I, I really enjoy using wood body planes. This here, my this top smoother, is is a great, excellent smoothing plane. I, I like it more than the Stanley um, number four that I have. But what what I don't like about joining is. The, the one of the pleasures of using a wood plane is the fact that it has a wood sole and is very little friction and it, it, it it's it feels there, there's a certain feel to it when you use it that um it, it makes it makes planing actually more enjoyable in my opinion however when you're when you're doing something like edge joining that that smooth um non the the the, the friction the lack of friction actually works to a disadvantage for me because I don't, I'm sure a woodworker who, you know, he, he grew up in a trade and, and, he, and he was doing this from you know, the age of 15 or 16, that's not going to be an issue to him or her. Um, you know, the, the, back in, in, the, in the late or mid to late 18th century when these planes were still really prevalent that's what they used day in and day out so it was there was really you learned how to use it just like as you would learn how to ride a bike and this is probably i'll say it again these boards are too really too short to be joining with a a, a um with a, with a plane like this, you, you would you would generally use a, use your your jack plane or your, even your smooth plane to do that because these we're we're talking about boards. That one board is maybe ten inches on the other, probably about sixteen or so. So fourteen and fourteen and ten. I was close enough. That's that's certainly short enough even for a number four or a number three plane. I'm taking a little longer here only because this side, so I can show you this. This side had a gouge taken out of it. You see right there. But we'll we'll try it anyway. And that's not bad, but it could be a lot better. This, the one board, the one side of this board is really beat the heck. It's, it's very skewed. So what I'll do here, and this is another, something you, you'll learn when you're doing this, when you have a board that's skewed, and you're trying to join it to a board that isn't skewed, you want to raise it up. You want to raise it up to the level where the skew is sort of parallel with the straight edge. What's really, really cool about using these planes is it's all, it's, it, they feel so effortless. It, 
they, they, they just feel like you're, you're not even working when you're pushing them. And I mean, there, there's a, a beautiful glue joint right there. If you can see that, hopefully. It, it, that would be, if you glued that up and you made an effort to match the grain, like, like right there, like that, you, you would not see any seam at all. I mean, this, the, the drain on these two boards actually matches up fairly well. There you go, it's really nice. That would glue up pretty much flawlessly. So yeah, the, these are a plane like this, a tool like this is really a, a definitely a viable option if you want to get a joiner plane and if you want to do, want to invest a little bit of time in in learning how to restore it and um, getting it flat, the good news is um, price generally is going to be, from what I'm seeing, about half the cost of a of a um, metal body like a bench plane, like number a Stanley or or um, perhaps a a record. I, I've never seen a record number seven, but I'm assuming they have them. Um, and the, the really good news is the irons on these planes, from what, in my experience, is they've all, um, they're, they're very high quality steel, they're, they're really, really good tool steel that sharpens up beautifully, and, um, and is actually, they, the, 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 the one major issue I always come across is usually they, they're beat up because at some point somebody who wasn't a woodworker or perhaps um, maybe it wasn't necessarily a woodworker who used a lot of hand tools. Um, they, they would get their hands on these tools and use them for all of the wrong reasons. And then maybe try to sharpen it or, or do whatever with it. And they would, they would um, make it, actually make it worse, not better. Usually, but usually what you would come across is you just see they, they almost always, every time I've found poor, poor, Irons in poor conditions, or just somebody took it to a power grinder, and um, this this skewed it. And you can see the you can see the grinding marks on it, the the marks from the power grinder. Uh, I've said before I don't use power grinders very often. They're, they're, to me, they're not a sharpening tool; they're a repairing tool. And, and, and they the the ironic thing is when people use a power grinder on these irons like this and they mess it up, oftentimes unless you really was want to. You know, as I said, get your carpal tunnel up and fired up. You, you'll you'll spend you'll spend 45 minutes to an hour grinding it on a diamond stone or or a coarser grit um, Arkansas stone or, or something to that effect. And and it takes forever to get these things back straight and and not just any any blade that, that it gets rolling like that. It's going to take a while to get back um, when you're doing it solely by hand. So that's the one instance where. A power grinder is actually the best option to, for me, in my opinion, to fix a tool that was ruined by a by a power grinder. But if, if you come across one of these irons that is in good shape already, um, meaning that it's not all beat up, the it, it usually can be sharpened as easy or easier than modern tool steel. Um, some of the harder tool steels, especially like A2, I don't care for in the least. And I'm no metallurgist by any stretch, but I, I just know I don't like it. It, it, um, it's, it takes forever to set up, which is why I don't care for it. I'd ra I would rather have it, I would rather have to sharpen more than, um, I would certainly rather have to sharpen more frequently than take an hour and a half to set up an iron because the tool steel is so hard, it, you're, you're you're spending forever grinding it and, and the whole nine yards. Because um, you're sharp, you're going to sharp it anyway. So why, I, I, I much prefer a tool that's easier to set up. Um, easier tools that are easier to set up are easier to sharpen. And now they, they, you can argue that they'll get duller quicker, but I don't really buy that for a second. If they do, it's not much duller and regardless, you're, you're, you're going to be sharpening it anyway. So. You know, does it matter if you're 
if your chisel or your plain iron gets gets dull after an hour or an hour and 15 minutes no not really N none of us um, none of most hobbyists aren't going to be using them to that point regardless where, you, where, where you're just hogging off wood all day long if you are god bless you it's I, I, you're 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 braver than i am but once again um just offering suggestions here um wood body joiners are viable they are still out there they're relatively inexpensive and they can work it just takes a little bit of, of, of effort and practice um it's just a shame I, 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 if you if you're considering going this route, maybe watch a few videos from professionals. They'll tell you what really what to look for. And and like I said, the, the, the big thing I've found is most of these bodies, most of these planes are going to require a flattening. And because they just the nature of the wood, they're going they're going to warp a little bit. They're going to um, they, they most of them have twists, which is really the the big issue. Perfect flat plain bodies that's that's a myth that you need that you really don't you, you need a you need a plain body that doesn't have twist in it meaning it's sort of like skewed from one end like if, you know higher on this end than that end or vice versa if that happens a plane it won't work as well as it should but it does not have to be perfectly flat in the sense that there's not a, a little an iota of a gap from here to there um, the real, I said before with, with joiners especially, the real issue is right be, the, the area right here behind the mouth and here right in front of the mouth. If that area is nice and on, on level with each other, on the same plane, so to speak, the plane will work just fine in most cases. It will do the job of joining. It will do jo the job of flatting, flattening lar larger boards. Um, which is where these planes really come in handy again. Um, and um, not here to, to get all over the number four plane, which I hope wasn't the, I hope wasn't what people perceive. If if you watched my video from my side, I was not trying to knock the number four plane. I was saying that that it the number four plane. Um, when you're using certain woods, certain longer lengths, it, it's not as as necessary as people make it out to be is all it, it you're, you're going to when you when you start building larger furniture it, and if you are showing it by hand um, which I don't do very often as I mentioned but you do have to do it no matter what no matter what if you're using unless you have a really nice planer slash joiner power joiner setup which I do not you will have to do some flattening with a plane like this on, lo on longer boards um, especially like bookshelves in particular, you, you, you kind of want your, your bookshelves. I always build, build, use dados for my shelving. I, I like, I don't like adjustable shelving all that much. So I want my data, I want my, my, um, my two sideboards to be nice and flat, as flat as I can get them. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and tell you they're flat like a mirror on a telescope, but it, it, it to me, that makes everything go together much more, more, um, smoothly. So, um, once again, consider a wood-bodied joiner if you're in a market for a joiner. Um, just know, just know that you probably already have to put some work in it. There's no doubt about that. And if you're new, if you're really new and, and you're not experienced with hand planes, it might be a little bit beyond you um, to know how to get it. You're, there's a very good chance, and I, I don't say this to be mean, but there's a very good chance you're going to make it worse not better so and if that's the case and you are looking for a joiner and you're really not all that experienced okay I definitely recommend dealing with the, the, a Stanley number seven or a, or a corresponding manufacturer who has a good reputation if you are experienced somewhat you know how to use a plane a little bit and you um, do need a joiner, then maybe this will work for you. So I hope this helped a lot and I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks.